We begin today at the Mishnah, towards the bottom of Lamad Ches, Lamad Beis, the last two lines. This is a continuation to all the previous Mishnahis in this Padik that's discussing two people, there's a nether of Hanob between one and the other, can't have any Hanob, but there are still certain things that you could do. We had a bunch of list of things before in the Mishnahis, and here's another thing that could be done, even if there's a nether of Hanob. Zog Te'elige Mishnah. Hamudar Hanob, Machaveiroi, a person makes a nether not to have Hanob from his friend. He goes in to visit him when he's sick. So he can go in and he can stand. He can't sit down. Because he made a net there, so he can't sit down there. Now the Gemara will explain, obviously, the difference. Why could he only stand and not sit? And the Gemara will also explain what is this mission is speaking about. Who made the nether of whom? The sick person made the nether not to have a gnaw of the visiting person? Or the reverse? The visiting person made a nether not to have a gnaw from the sick person? Then the Mishnah says, Umerapai Rufus Nefesh. If he's a doctor, he could heal him, this person himself. Rufus Nefesh over here means the, the, the human being he could heal. Avaloi Rufus Mamin. But he may not heal a, if he owns an animal and the animal has to be healed, he, that he may not do for him. Okay, that, that will be explained to the Gemara as well, as we'll see. Zok the Gemara. So the first question here is, Bimaya Skinon. What are we talking about over here? Regarding this case of someone visiting someone that's sick, who exactly is not allowed to have a na of whom? If the case over here is that the possessions, the money of the person that's visiting, so the nether over here was that the chayla the is not allowed to have a na of him, of this person coming and visiting him, so then if so, the question is, Afila Yashiv Nami. So even if he's coming in, he's visiting, and he's actually sitting down, it should be allowed. Why should it be allowed? So as the Ran explains over here, because you're doing a mitzvah. You're doing a mitzvah of bikr chaylam. And if you're doing a mitzvah, so then you're not here to, to, to give him any hana. You're just here to do a mitzvah. So when you do a mitzvah, that's not included in your neder of, of, not, uh, of him not having hana from you. So you should be allowed to stand there. You should be allowed to sit there. What's the difference? In the reverse, if it's the possessions, the properties of this sick person that are forbidden for the person coming to visit him. So now the question is, how is he allowed to enter into his home? How is he allowed to enter into his property? Even just to come in, even to stand there. He's not allowed to come and stand in his property. If you remember, we learned at the beginning of the Patek, regarding a person that makes a net and not to have a no, you now lead him not to enter into his property. And the Gemara there explained, this is the opinion of Rabbi Yezer, that says that even though people are usually not makpit, someone just walks through the property, but nevertheless, you're not, if you, there's a net and not to have a no, you may not even walk in. So how is he allowed to walk in over here? True, he's doing a mitzvah, but in this case, it doesn't matter. We learned already before, when you have a net there, so you're not allowed to be over on that net there for the purpose of fulfilling a mitzvah. So how could he even stand there? Mm. So that's the question. So the Gemara here is going to bring three different pshatim <coughs> in the Mishnah. What does the chayla have? What does the chayla have? In the first case, when in you're coming... In the second case. No, no, but here the, the issue is that the mavake, the visitor is having hana. He's having hana from the chayla, right? The Gemara said, Ibi shenich se chayla surna la mavake. So the Gemara says three pshatim. Oh, Mashmuel lo oilam. So Shmuel's pshat is really the pshat here in the Mishnah is b'shenichse mevaker asur na lachayla. That it's the mevaker, the one that's coming to visit, that he is aser to the chayla. He or his possessions are aser to the person that's sick. So now, what's the issue of him coming in? Didn't we say before that it's a mitzvah? So if you're doing a mitzvah, there's no issue. And says the Gemara, but the pshat is b'makim shenait l'nschar al yeshiva. It's in a place where people charge when they come to visit a chayla, and they're not just standing there, but they're coming to sit down and, and to be there, to be present there, to sit for a while. People charge for that, to be able to be there, to, to wow. sort of, I don't know if mom is to be an aid, but to sit there with the chayla. And if, you, if the guy is going to sit there for a while, people charge for this. <laughs> so the fact that you're coming in, and you're coming in, and you're not charging for this, so this is... Uh, this is a hana that you're giving him. And people do not charge just to come in and visit if they're just standing there. So the Gemara asks, and this is my poske, why, why, why are you making this distinction? If people are charging, so why, why are people charging to, to come and sit there and people are, do not charge if they're just coming to visit and just to stand there? 
So the Gemara explains, how come Ashmolon, the Chiddush of our Mishnah is to tell us, the Av, Bamakim Shanaitlan Schar, Ala Yeshive, even in a place where people charge when they come in and they're not just there to visit, but they come down and sit and remain there sitting, they take, they charge for that. But Boy, Lumishkal, again, Shanaitlan Schar, Ala Yeshive, Shanaitlan Schar, thank you, Ala Yeshive, Boy, Lumishkal. So re- regarding sitting, for that he's going to have to charge. In other words, this person that made the nether not to have a no, so he's going to have to charge the sick person for him to sit there. Because otherwise he's giving him a no for free. He made a nether not, not to give him a no. But regarding sitting, he is standing, that is, he's not going to have to charge him. Because if he's standing, people don't charge for that. And he's just doing a mitzvah. So the way that Ran explains this Gemara, there are two details of here. First of all, the point of here is, Bikachaylam is a mitzvah. You don't charge for Bikachaylam. But when you're coming in and you're standing, you fulfill the mitzvah. Without sitting, you fulfill the mitzvah. But if you want me to do more than just the mitzvah, to sit down and to remain there with the person sitting, so people charge. They're not charging for the mitzvah. They're charging for you sort of being an aid. And I'm not much an aid, but sitting there. So that's more than the mitzvah. That's what people charge for. So, but the Ran also points out, and similar to what we had on a Gemara before, this is not the meaning in all places. In some places, because in the end of the day, being there with the chayla, every minute that you stay there, you are continuing to do a mitzvah, even though you don't need it for the mitzvah. Just standing there a little bit is already a mitzvah. But every moment that you're there, it's a continuation of the mitzvah. So therefore, in many places, they don't charge not for the yeshiva and not for the amida. So therefore, the Gemara here is saying that in those places where they do charge for yeshiva and they don't charge for the amida, that's a correct minute, that's, that's right, because amida is the, the mitzvah itself, and yeshiva is staying there longer. And therefore, the Mishnah is saying, when the nether is that this person, the sick person, is not allowed to have ano from the person that's visiting him, so standing there, he's allowed to stand there, because that's something you don't charge for. But sitting there, he can't sit without charging him, because then he's having ano. That's the first pshat, Shmuel's pshat. Yibai say me. Another pshat the Gemara says, "Kid Rab Shimon ben Al Yakim." This is similar to what Rab Shimon ben Al Yakim says over here later in this pedik. Gizere shema yisha ba'mida. Shimon ben Al Yakim is speaking about a person that's coming into somebody's property in the year shmita when he's not allowed to have hano from that person. So now during the year of Shemitah, even though you're not allowed to have hano from this person that owns this property, but and you're not allowed to even walk in, like we said, right? But nevertheless, if it's Shemitah, the whole property is Hefke. Anybody can walk in mm. to go and take whatever fruits they want because the trees, everything is Hefke. Yeah. However, you're allowed to walk in to take fruits because it's Hefke. But to go in and then spend extra time there, that you're not allowed. Because yeah. right? that the extra time, now you're having Hana from the person. You're not just going and taking the fruits which are Hefke. So Rav Shem ben Al-Yakim says, if so, you're not allowed to go in there at all because there's Xayda if you go in, so then you might remain. Yisha, you may stay longer than just picking the fruits. That's what he said regarding Shmita. So Hachanami over here as well. It's a similar, but it's a bit different. Gizayda Shem Yisha Bi Yeshiva. If you're coming into a sick person and you're standing, so then because you're remaining standing, so you'll constantly remember, why am I standing? Why am I not sitting down? Usually, usually you come to visit a person, you sit down. Why am I standing? Because I know I have to leave. I can't stay over my time because it really does, he's not allowed to have a no for me. So therefore, if you sit down though, you might end up staying longer mm. and longer than what the mitzvah is. And therefore, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to sit down. Shema Yisha Bi Yeshiva. Ah, okay. No, and Hanami. So the, uh, the Ranavir explains regarding regarding Shmita. So if the person comes into the field and he's standing, so then he's not gonna he's not gonna remember that he can't stay any longer because it's it's normal to be in the field and to stand. There is no place to sit over there. So telling the person that when you come into the person into this person's field, don't sit down, just stand. It's not gonna be a reminder for him that he has to leave soon. But when it comes to the case of visiting someone, if you're standing and you're not sitting, since you usually sit, it's gonna be a reminder for him that he has to leave. So that's the the distinction between standing and sitting. A third pshat the Gemara says, Ula Marula says, no, we're speaking about the reverse. Really, the case of here is that the property, the monies of the chayla is forbidden for the one visiting to have a no from him. So if so, the question was, how is he allowed to even enter into his house? Says the Gemara, a kagain, or in the Ran, actually, it's Mashmei, takes out the word kagain, or the loy adre min chiyuse. When this sick person made the nether that, no, that you shouldn't have a no from him, he didn't mean to include in that nether <coughs> if it's going to be important for his life. If he gets sick and now you need someone to come and visit him, 
So over here, because he got sick and he needs for his life, for his health, for you to come visit him. So for that, he didn't make the nether. So therefore, you're allowed to come in. So for that, to if that's the case, that visiting him is not included in the nether, I feel a yeshiv nami. You should be able to come in and sit down as well. Says the Gemara, no, that is included in the nether because ha'ev shebamida. You could come in and stand there. He needs he, he needs you to come and visit him for his life, for his chayis. But it's enough if you come and stand. But coming and sitting down is already something else. Now you're sitting there, you're spending time, you're sitting down on a chair, and you're having hanav from his from his house and from his chair. That's already included in the nether. You're not allowed to come in and sit down. That's the distinction between standing and sitting. You want him to come, but comes away. I don't want to come. <laughs> <laughs> so the Gemara asks. So we had over here three pshatim in the Mishnah. The Gemara now brings a brayse that adds another halacha to what the Mishnah said, and a very it says a very interesting thing. The brayse says that in such a case where there was a neder, so chalohu, if this person himself got sick, so then nichnas lavakrei. You're allowed to act, go into him to visit him, like the Mishnah said. The Mishnah said only standing, but the, the same thing over the Bible says, you're allowed to go and visit him. Chala benai, but if this person's son got sick, so the Bible says, then shoy le you're not allowed to go into his house and visit him. You're going to have to ask him in the marketplace outside of his house, how is your son doing, if you want to ask him. You can't go into his right. house. So this is very interesting. Right. When his son gets sick, you can't go into his house. Right. So the Gemara now says... <laughs> Uh, let's look at the, the, the different interpretations that we had before. According to which interpretation does this price make sense? Bishleim according to all this pshat that said, the Omar, that what is the Mishnah speaking about, and therefore what's the price is speaking about? When it's a sick person's properties and monies that are forbidden for the one visiting to have enough from it. And as Ole explained, but that, that that does not include visiting when he gets sick, or kagoyin, or maybe without the word kagoyin, doleadre min he did not include him that neder if he himself gets sick. It's his chayas. He needs someone to come and visit him. So shaper. So then we can explain this price. Because if he himself gets sick, so you're allowed to come in and visit him because he did not include that in his nether. It's negay for his life. If his son gets sick, true, he loves his son, but still, it's not him. And therefore, for his son, you're not allowed to walk into his house. That is included in the nether. So we can understand the distinction between him getting sick and his son getting sick. But according to Shmuel, the Alma that said, that the case of here is that the monies and the hana of the one visiting is also for the person that got sick. So then, and Maishna Benoit, what's the difference between the person himself that got sick and what's and, and or if his son got sick? Why should it be any different? We said before the point is that when you come in, so you're doing a mitzvah. And the only reason why you can't come in is if you're going to sit down. If you're going to sit down, since that's something that people charge for, that's not the mitzvah, mamish, the, the mitzvah itself. So therefore, the, you're not allowed to go in and sit down. But going in itself is, is a mitzvah. So what's the difference between him or his son? If his son gets sick, it's also a mitzvah of Pekah so, so why are we saying, Adarab, even more so, for, for if you should be allowed to enter into the son. You didn't even make a net there. The, the son is allowed to have a nod from you. There's no reason why not to go into the son. Um, Allah, so the Gemara answers, Shmuel will have to tell you that the Mishnah and the Braisa are not the same case. The Mishnah, like Shmuel said, is the case is that the one visiting is his, his money, is his Hana, is also to the sick person. But Braisa, over here in this Braisa, when it makes a distinction between when the person himself got sick or his son got sick, so here he's going to agree to Allah. When it's the, the monies of the sick person that's also on the one that's visiting, and therefore we make the distinction that regarding himself, when he gets sick, he didn't mean to include him, himself being sick that you shouldn't visit him because that's chiyusei, that's his life. But when his son gets sick, that's part of the neder, and therefore you could only ask him in the marketplace and not enter into his house. Frek the Gemara, my poska. Why are you making this distinction? In other words, if this is the pshat and the b'raise, if Shmuel is forced to say that this is the pshat and the b'raise, so why is he saying that that's not pshat in the Mishnah? Why doesn't he not want to learn like Ola that in the Mishnah as well, the case is that the properties of the chayla is also to the one visiting him? So the answer is Shmuel must listen kashise. Because Shmuel, when he saw the Mishnah, he had a problem with what it said in the Mishnah. The question was, the original question that we asked before, my area, the Tani Oymit. Why in the Mishnah does it say that when you come in, so standing you're allowed to be there, but not sitting. So Shmuel held that 
In order to explain the distinction between Oymid and Yashiv, so you can't say that the property of the Chayla is also for the person that's coming in, because there's no distinction between Oymid and Yashiv. If, if it's also for you to be there, what's the difference between Oymid and Yashiv? Now before, the Gemara explained that there is a difference. And the difference is that by Oymid, you'll just do the mitzvah and you'll leave. You won't stay extra. By Yeshiv, once you sit down, we're concerned that you're going to stay there extra. Right? So it's sort of a But Shmuel didn't hold of that gzeda. So if you don't hold of that gzeda, so then there's no distinction between Oymid and Yeshiv. The, the, the property of the chayla is not allowed for you to be there. Why should there be any difference? So because of this question, so therefore Shema Mino, therefore he learned the Pshat of the Mishnah. Like he said, the Nechzeh Mevakir Asurun Al Chayla. That the case is that the, the monies, the properties of the, the Mavaka, the one visiting is also on the Chayla, and therefore Shmuel said what the, that the distinction is that when you stand, people don't charge, and when you sit, people do charge, and therefore you can't go in without charging when you sit, because then you're giving him Hana. Sakta Gemara, since we brought up the union of Bika Chaylem, so the Gemara here brings the source of Bika Chaylem. Where do we see a Remez for Bika Chaylem and Atayra? So it's interesting, the Gemara says Remez. So really, there's a discussion about this, but the Pashtus Bikha Chaylem is included in the mitzvah of Avas Yisrael. But it's, it's sort of one detail of that mitzvah of Avas Yisrael. But where do you see the Indian of Bikha Chaylem separately in the Taira? Shanema, hmm. the Pasik says, by Kairach in Kamois Kaladam Yimusanela. Moshe Rabbeinu says, if these people here from the Kairach that are fighting with me, if they're going to die like all people die, Upakudas Kaladam Vegaime. And their time will come like, like all people. That's a simple pshat. So the Gemara here Taish is as follows. My mashma, where do you see over here in this Pasik Pika Chaylem? What, what was Moshe Rabbeinu saying? So Rav says, what he was saying was as follows. In Kamayiz Kala Adam, Yumusun Eila, if these people are going to die naturally like everybody else, which is Shehen Chaylem, Umutarim, Barisasam, they're going to be sick and they'll be lying in their bed. And when it says in the Pasik, Upakudas Kal Adam, it's extra. Why does it have to add that? Upakudas Kal Adam. What it means is, Pekudah means to come and visit. And people are going to come and visit them. So then, what is everybody going to say? That the Ebesheh did not send me. The Ebesheh did not send Meishah Rabbeinu. Because these people that are fighting with me are not, are not being punished and they're going to die a natural death. That's what Meishah Rabbeinu was saying. So from here we see in the Taita, a remes for the mitzvah of Bikah Chaylem. Pekudah's Kala Adam. The Rosh over here brings that the Amos, the Gemara and Bab Metziah, Brings another source of the mitzvah of Bikah Chaylem by Avram Avinu. It says over there by Avram Avinu that uh, by Daitan Lovnecha, I forgot the exact version of the Pasik, but it says that he taught his children, and part of the Gemara there says he taught them the Chnasasarchem and Bikah Chaylem. But over here the Gemara wants to bring a Remez specifically Bikah Chaylem. Over there in the Pasik it doesn't mamish specifically say Bikah Chaylem. Here it says Pukudas Kal Adam. Pukudas Kal Adam means the visitation of Bikah Chaylem. Now the Gemara brought up Moshe Rabbeinu and the Machlekes of Kairach, so Darshan is another. Pasik there. Darash Rav Darshan. What did Moshe Rabbeinu say? In Bria Yiv Rashem. If Hashem will create a new creation. He's talking about when, what will happen to the Einish of Kairach and his, all his people. In Bria Gehenim Mutif Etia. If Gehenim is already created, so it's good. It's here. The Gehenim is here. In Lav Yiv Rashem. If not, Hashem will create now Gehenim in order to punish the people that are fighting here. So that's uh, the two Lashayn is Bria, if it's already here, or Yivra, Hashem will create. Trek the Gemara, but how could you say that the Ebesha will create? For Tanya, but we learned in Abraise, Shiva Dvarim Nivru Kaidim Shinivra Ilam. There are seven different things that were created before the world was created. And the Rani explains what this means is that's Olubi Machshava. They enter into Hashem's thought before He came to create the world. In other words, like, like it explains this Indian Chassidus, the idea of all of the that these things come from a higher level than creation. What are these five things, or seven things rather? One is Elohim, following. Teireh, Tshuva, Gan Eden, Gehenim, Kisiyakovit, and Beis Mikdash and Shmoi, Shomashiach. Teireh, we see Teireh is before the world is created, the Chassidus, the Apostle says, Hashem Konani, Reish is darker. Referring to Taira, it's Reish is darker before the world is created. Tshuva, the chsev, beterem adem yuladu v'techeilil. Before you created the mountains and the world, Tosha v'enesh adaka. There's the tshuva of the person to do tshuva. Gan eden, the chsev, ayita Hashem alakim, gan, be'eden, mi kedem. It comes mi kedem, from before. Gehenim, the chsev, ki aroch, mi esmoel, tofte. Tofte is one of the names of Gehenim, that is. 
Tafta means a person that gets persuaded by the Yitzhahara, so he ends up in Gehenim. So Gehenim is prepared from Espa, from before, from the day before, meaning before the world's created. Kisei Kovid is from before the world is created. The Abish's throne is prepared from before. Veis Amigdash Tchsev Kisei Kovay Maraim Merishay Maraim Exalt from before. So the Kisei Kovay over here does not refer to the Abish's throne, but it refers to the Veis Amigdash. Shmai Shal Mashiach Tchsev Yehi Shmai LaElam, and LaElam means from before the world was created. So we see all these things over here that it's here from before the world. Interesting, and Gehenim is one of them because really Gehenim is not a place of where the Abish is just punishing, but Gehenim is a cleansing. It's to elevate and to refine a yid and to elevate him. So Gehenim is, comes from a very high place. So over here, the question is, what is Moshe Rabbeinu saying? That if Gehenim is already in existence, so good. But if not, the Abish will, will now create Gehenim and they'll all be swallowed into the Gehenim. The earth will open its mouth and they'll be swallowed into Gehenim. But how could you say that this is a new creation. It's already there from before. Elohikama, so rather, what Moshe Rabbeinu was saying was, puma mutev. He was talking about the mouth of the earth, to, the opening, that they should fall into Gehenim. If that mouth of the earth to open up, that they should fall into Gehenim, is already created, is good, so it's here. Vimloi, if not, yiv rasha. The Abish will not create an opening that the earth will open up and they'll fall in. But how could you say that Moshe Rabbeinu is saying that Hashem now will create something new in the world? What the Pasuk says, that in part of nature is, the Abish creates the world, and there's never anything new that happens in the world that's not there from the beginning of creation. And says the Gemara, so rather this is what Moshe Rabbeinu was saying. If the mouth of the earth is not here in this place in the desert where Moshe Rabbeinu and the Eden is, Hashem should bring that mouth of the earth, which was already created from the time of creation, but it should, He should bring it closer, and that mouth should come here, and it should open up right of here. So it's just a matter of, of bringing it close to, to here, but it was already created from before. A connection to this, another drasha, darash rav v'amri la'om rab Yitzchak. what's the chat on the Pasuk where it says, Shemesh yireyach, the sun and the moon, omad zavula. It stood in its abode. That's a simple shot of the word zvula, but zvul is actually one of the levels of the heavens. There are seven heavens. We learned about this once in the Gemara of Chagige. Zvul is one of those levels of heavens. And the Shemesh and Yirech stood in the heaven that's called zvul. So the question is, Shemesh v'yirech b'zvul my bayin. What were the Shemesh and Yirech doing in the heaven that's called zvul, which is a higher level? V'habrikiyakvi. When the Abish created them, the Abish placed them Berikia Shemayim, they're in the level of Rekia. Why would they, did they go up to the level of Zvul? Lamed, what this teaches is, this is a Pasuk that's connected to the story of Kairach. As you see there, in the, it's a Pasuk in Chavakak, where you see there, it talks about the Machlekes of Kairach. So what were they doing there? So the answer is, Melamed, Sha'olu, Shemesh, V'yireyach, Merikia L'Zvul. The sun and moon went up higher from their place in Rekia. They went up to Zvul. They went to, 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 to tell the Abish to something. They say to the Abish, Master of the Universe. If you're going to give the proper judgment for the sake of Moshe Rabbeinu, in other words, you're going to punish those people that are fighting with him, on a him. So we are going to shine in the world. We're going to illuminate the world. But if you won't, uh, 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 judge those that are fighting with Moshe Rabbeinu, ain't on a meeting. We're not going to illuminate the world. At that time, when the sun and the moon said this, Yara behan chitzim v'chanisais. The Ebesha threw at them arrows and spears. And Amala, the Ebesha says to the sun and the moon, Chal yayim v'yayim, every single day, Mishtach v'im l'chem. There are people that are serving you as idols and bow down to you. V'atem meirim. And you still shine, you still illuminate the world. <laughs> for, for the sake of my honor, you have not protested. <laughs> but now for the honor of a human being, for Moshe Rabbeinu, for this you are defending Moshe Rabbeinu. So the Gemara now concludes and says that because of this, every single day, the Ebishter throws arrows and spears at the sun, Umirin, and because of this, they go out and shine. They, they, they go. Really, the Abisha took away their power to come and illuminate the world, but the Abisha throws arrows at them, and they go. They go out and shine. Shanem, as the Pasuk says, With the light, or with the effect of the Abisha's spears and arrows, they go. They go out and shine into the world. Coming back to Bikah Chaylem. Tanya, Nebrai said, Bikah Chaylem ain't Lashir. Bikah Chaylem has no amount to it. What does this mean, it has no amount? My ain't Lashir. So Rav Yosef Lameimah, Rav Yosef thought the pshat of here is ain't shilamat neschara. There's no amount for the reward of bikkachaylim. 
Amalei Abaye, so Abaye asked, but for all mitzvahs, me yes, shiur matan scharam. All other mitzvahs, there is an amount for the schar that you get. But vatnan says in the Mishnah and Pekei Yavis, have a zayr be mitzvah kala kibul chamura. You should be careful with a light mitzvah as a, a stringent mitzvah, as an important mitzvah. Because she anati yadeh matan scharam shal mitzvahs, because you don't know the real reward of a mitzvah. The real reward of a mitzvah is based on the, uh, what what mitzvahs really are. The essence of a mitzvah is all the same. It's the rotsin of Hashem, which is very deep, and it, there's no levels in this. Kala b'chamura is a lower aspect of the mitzvah, where it becomes light, stringent, the way it relates to this world, but really the source of all mitzvahs is beyond any limitations. So how can we say that over here, b'kechaylam has no shir? Elam rabaya, so therefore rabaya says, what it means is, afil agadl eitzel katan. B'kechaylam, no shir, meaning that even if it's a simple person that's not well, the greatest yid, and the biggest chacham and tzaddik, should fulfill the mitzvah of b'kechaylam and go and visit him. The way the Mepharshim explained this is, by the midst of a Shavas Avedi, you find that there's a concept called Zakim Venelev Yichvede, that a person that it's not for his the, the level of honor to go and pick up this Aveda and return it, he's potter from the mitzvah. But Avir by Bikr Chaylem, even the greatest person should go and visit the simplest person. Ravama, and we learn this, by the way, from the Eivishter. That's what the Mepharshim say. The Eivishter himself came to visit Avram Avinu, so that's the greatest godl by a cotton to come and visit. <coughs> Rav Omar, Rav says, I feel a meya pom and bayon. When it says, Ein Lashir means that you should come and visit even a hundred times a day. If you visit it once, you can visit again and again. There's never a limit to the mitzvah of Bikr Chayla. Obviously, of course, only as much as the Chayla can handle. What the, that, that, whatever it is. Uh, okay, but the mitzvah of Bikr Chayla has no shir. So, the Gemara, Rav Omar, Rav Acha Bachanine, Rav Acha Bachanine said, Kalam Avaka Chayla. You visit a person that's sick, Neitel Echad Mishishim Bitzare. So you take away a 60th of his pain. Or another mm-hmm. girsa here in the Gemara is Micholyai, from his actual sickness. Mm-hmm. Amri lay, um, that is. So they said to Rabach HaBachanine, so if so, we could heal every person. It's in Cain, Leil and Shitin, Vleik Mua, let 60 people come into this person, and he will get up. Mm-hmm. He will be, he'll be healthy. Mm-hmm. So each one took away a 60th of a sickness. Amalei, so he told him, no, there's two different things over here you have to understand about this. Number one, Kasir Yaisa, the Bey Rebbe. This means like the tenth that Rebbe spoke about. The Gemara will soon bring over here the source of this tenth. We learned this in the Gemara in Ksubis. And what this means is that the first one takes away 60th, and the next one only takes away 60th of, 60th of the remainder, not the 60th of the original amount of the sickness. Each one that comes in only takes away 60th of the remainder. So it comes out less that together less. they don't, right, exactly, it's less and less, so together they don't take away the full sickness. Double, That's double one thing. <laughs> okay. Well, so, but now, so you're going to say, bring in many more people. So the Gemara now adds another thing. Oh, Ben Gilo. It has to be is Ben Gilo. What does Ben Gilo mean? The Mepharash here says Ben Gilo means it has to be someone that's a similar age, young or old. But the most Rishayim here say, and the Ran here says, it has to be someone that's born in the same mazel as the person that's sick. And that's something we don't necessarily know, who's born in the same mazel. So therefore, that's very difficult to know. Uh, ben Gilo should be able to come in and take away 60th. Now, where's the source of this concept, the 10th, like Rebbe said? The Tani will learn in Abraisa. Rebbe Yoyme, Rebbe said, Vas hanizaynes minichse achen. A daughter that, so her father passed away, and now you have all the possessions here. Who yarshins, who gets them? The, the son. But there's also the obligation that the daughter gets fed, and besides the daughter getting fed, there's also a tenth of the father's money that we have to give for the daughter for her to be able to get married. So now, Neteles Iser Nechasim. So this daughter takes a tenth from the properties of the son that in order for to get married. Omrulai, so now they said to Rebbe, Le Rebbe, Ledvarecha, according to you, Mishi Yeshlei Esa Banisuben, if so, it would come out. Person passes away, he has ten daughters, and he has one son. So then, Ein Loi Lebem, Bemokim Banais, Klum. So the son gets nothing because you have to give a tenth of each one of the daughters, and they all have to get married. <laughs> so Rabbi says, no, that's not what I meant. What we do is, <laughs> The first one gets a tenth. The second one only gets a tenth of the remainder of that tenth. So if there was a hundred, so then the first one gets ten from the hundred. But then afterwards, the second one gets only a tenth from ninety. So it's only nine. And the third one only gets a tenth from what's remainder after the second. 
But then we don't split it between these 10 daughters that the first one gets more, the second one gets less, because really you have all 10 daughters here at the same time. But the chayzer is the chok is b'shove. And then you take all of these amounts of the 10 and you, you split it amongst them equally that each one gets their amount Equal, equal share to be able to get married. So that's that's the source of this concept, the tenth. And the Gemara is saying a similar thing regarding Bikachilim, that the sixtieth is each one takes away only the remainder from not not from the original amount. Yes, we learned this in the Gemara.